and faint not. We're going to focus on two areas in this word today. We're going to first of all look at the book of Isaiah, and then we're going to look at the example of the eagle's wing. Amen. And uh, I think the key for all of us is going to be the word wings. I mean, you know, if you're going to follow Jesus Christ, you've got to learn how to wait on it. Amen. 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 And, and, and if, you, if you don't get that, you're going to have a difficult time. Because you're going to have to learn how to wait on him. But I can testify, and if you're here in the house, you can testify with me. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He never comes when you want him to. But he is always, always, always on time. The book of Isaiah is probably one of the most powerful books in the Old Testament. But I think what we're going to learn today is because this word is applicable to the times we are living in right now, because Isaiah's time was a time of great confusion. Okay? And the people of God during that time were really a minority. You can see in our nation now, the Church of Jesus Christ is becoming a minority. And he shares these precious words that my wife read in verse 31. That they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And then he said they will walk and not faint. So I really want to deal with the nation of Israel at this time, and I want to deal with this book of Isaiah. How many have heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls? All had the Dead Sea Scrolls, for those who haven't. These were scrolls discovered along the Dead Sea in Qumran in 1947. Hallelujah. These were scrolls. Can you put the first picture up there for me? Should be a picture of the scroll up there, right? Mm -hmm. Of all the scrolls they found, the book of Isaiah was the only one intact. Of the 54 columns contained, all 66 chapters of the Hebrew version of the biblical book of Isaiah was intact. And that should speak to us. As you know, the Orthodox Jewish community do not honor, serve, or acknowledge the book of Isaiah. Hallelujah. They acknowledge the written and oral law of Moses. The reason why they can't acknowledge the book of Isaiah, because Isaiah means salvation. The book of Isaiah is all about the coming of Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, in the book of Luke, we find Jesus, when he goes into the temple, he opens the book up to the book of, he opens the, uh, the scroll to the book of Isaiah. And he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel. And then he goes on to say, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. See, the book of Isaiah is all about the coming of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Even in Isaiah 53, he says he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of his peace was upon, of your peace was upon and by his Christ. We are healed. We are healed. That's all from Isaiah. Even as my words were just read in verse 3, when he talks about the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. You remember when John was baptizing in the Jordan River? And the Pharisees came down and they were questioning him. 
What did John do? He quoted Isaiah. As if to say, I'm the one, I'm the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. What I'm doing now, here you have a picture of something that God preserved. Because the devil can do a whole lot, but he cannot stop God's word. Yes. He can't stop God's word. Yes. This is why saints, we are running and doing and we're sitting in front of the television. Hey, that's all well and good, but we've got to have a season where we get back into studying and reading his word. We have to. The book of Isaiah is an important book. How did these Dead Sea Scrolls get so preserved? You remember when Jesus was leaving the temple in Matthew chapter 24? And the disciples were just telling him about the temple. Oh, how beautiful it is. And Jesus says, what does he say? Not one stone will stand upon another. And we know from the history books that 40 years after the death of Christ, we have the great Jewish revolt when the Jews rebelled against the Roman Empire and literally declared war and they paid a dear price. Thousands of Jews died. The temple was destroyed. During that time, God led specific men to take his word and to go hide his word. Can you give me that next picture? Should be a vase up there, right? Amen. This is what these scrolls were found in. And, and praise God that he preserved his word. Hallelujah. We serve a good God. Yes. The point I'm making to you is that the book of the, the scroll of, 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 of the book of Isaiah, not only was it was it found in completeness, it was also proven that it was a thousand years older than the rest of the scrolls. I serve an awesome God. So they were looking at close to the original writings of Isaiah. Proof now that God's word is true. Hallelujah. You can have confidence in his word. Matter of fact, we need to have confidence in his word now. A lot of us are putting our confidence in the White House. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I would just simply say this. If you look at where our world is today, we've had Democrats and we've had Republicans. It don't matter who's in it. So, you look at the, where our world is today, it's because of failed politics. It's because of corruption. I call it the WWF. <laughs> and we are looking, we are looking. Washington, Wall Street, and fools. That's what they are. The Washington, Wall Street fools. That is your political agenda. That's where all the money is going, and we're running around here instead of looking at his word. We are putting our hope in the fools. I don't trust Hillary Clinton, and I don't trust Donald Trump. I'm sorry, I don't. They're all billionaires. Can they relate to the system that's making $10 an hour on one job, got, can't afford health care, and got to go to another job and wait? You call yourself a child of God, we need to look at the real word of God. His word is truth. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give him praise. We give him glory and honor. Yes. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to focus on the condition of the nation of Israel during this time that Isaiah brings forth this powerful prophecy. This is a very difficult time for the nation of Israel. I'm going to read this to you. The book of Isaiah is a collection of oracles, prophecies, and reports. But the common theme is the message of salvation. There was, according to these writings, no hope in anything that was made by people. Our world has no hope right now. 
our world. There's no hope. We have all the hope in the world. Hallelujah. Yes. We know the truth. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, I will say this to you. Because the enemy now has such control over every, every part of how our nation functions, he's controlling the economics, He's controlling the laws. Yes. He's controlling the political scene. So therefore, as children of God, we've got to walk in the wisdom of God yes. in every area. Amen. We cannot be foolish with our finances. Yes. You need to be on top of your finances. Yes. If you are a young adult, you need to be careful about what you're going to school for or what your plans are. Yes. Because the system does not support you. Hallelujah. When Isaiah, in Isaiah's time, things were worse than they are with you and I. And he says, if you wait upon the Lord, you're going to renew your strength. We've got to wait on God, trust on God, and not get ahead of God. I'm here to tell you, we need to protect our house. You need to watch everything you're doing. I need to watch everything I'm doing. Because as a nation, things are not working in our favor. But we have the one who we have favor with. Jehovah Jireh, and he will be your provider. Yes, yes. Right? But at this time, there was no hope. Now watch this. The northern kingdom of Israel, because remember now, the nation of Israel, when it was under King David, was a nation in one. By the time Solomon takes over, things change. They stop worshiping the God of heaven and the nation is divided. You have a northern and a southern kingdom, okay? So here now, this prophet, Isaiah, a man of God, is watching all of this happen. We have seen the devil take our nation. You and I have been serving God, we are watching things happen, and you sit there and you're just amazed. I am amazed at what our kids have access to. Yeah, yes. And nobody cares. Yeah. Yeah. How many kids in here have played Grand, grand Theft Auto? We ain't gonna punish you. Look, hands went straight. <laughs> hands went straight. Up. Right? Some of y'all parents need to look at what y'all kids are looking at. Grand Theft Auto, serious stuff. The devil's brainwashing our kids. And nobody cares. Nobody cares back in, in, in Isaiah's time. Nobody cares. And then out of nowhere, God sent the Assyrians. Yes, he did. And the Assyrian took over the northern tribes. Uh-huh. And, and, and then eventually, God sent the Babylonian Empire. All this was happening. I want you to imagine now. We are here in the state of New Jersey, and all of a sudden, hundreds of thousands of, of, of armed soldiers came in, and all of a sudden, we were taken to foreign lands, and, and our, our, the state of New Jersey ended. I want you to imagine that now. This was a very difficult time when Isaiah wrote this particular book. Hallelujah. But when he was telling them now, is that God is going to make the rough places smooth. Yes. The crooked places are going to be made straight. Yes. What he is telling them now is that because you left the worship system God set up for you, now I've got to come in and purge the sin. How many of us remember the times we didn't listen and God said, well, i got to get your attention a different way. So now i got to purge the sin. I gotta put you in a situation of somewhat what, what I'm gonna call judgment, just so that I purge the sin out of you. And remember now, I've shown you pictures of the tabernacle, where the glory of God is to the east, right behind the holies of holies. Y'all remember that? And we showed you the courtyard, and God had set it up that if you sinned or you did something, you would go out back and you grab one of your animals and you take it to the courtyard and you slay your animal, the blood would be sprinkled on the brazen altar and God would forgive your sin. Well, they did away with that worship. They turned to other gods. 
So now the God who had a system where he's covering the sin said, I can't cover your sin no more. So now I've got to allow you to go into stressful situations to purge the sin. Hallelujah. I'm not mad at God for purging the sin from me. God has had to send judgment my way at times. Thank God he didn't condemn me. Aren't you glad he didn't condemn me? Amen. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. But every now and then, God will judge you because you don't want to listen. And that, that's how he purges evil. What Isaiah is saying here, there's coming a time where God's going to do away with this system. There's coming a time when somebody's going to cry in the wilderness announcing that, the, that a child is born in Bethlehem. That the king of glory has come. Jesus Christ paid it all now. But, but the reason why his name is salvation is because Jesus Christ died and took it all on the cross. So now you can confess your sin and be forgiven. Now God hears you again. That wasn't the case with Israel. The problem was sin and purification. And I want to say that we are not just forgiven of our, forgiven of our sin. We need to continually be purified. We need to continually get better with our attitudes. Amen. I'm amazed that the pastors and the different folks that uh, sit behind pulpits that walk around with attitude problems. It's attitude problems. Amen. We serve a God that has called us to walk and not faint. So anyhow, I broke down the book of Isaiah just briefly to show you now what was going on during that time and the message of salvation that the Christ was coming. And, and, and that those, and, and understand now, there were many men and women of God who served him wholeheartedly, yet they got caught in this windstorm. I, I would hope and pray that things are good over the next few years, but I am very concerned about our nation. Amen. Amen. And, and so we want to make sure that we are positioned, amen, where we're waiting upon him. Because in the end, we're going to re he's going to renew our strength. Amen. And then now, I want to talk to you briefly about the eagle. Because Isaiah here, he is saying to us that if we wait, we're going to renew. What are we going to renew? We're going to renew our strength. But then he takes the eagle to describe what's going to happen in the process. He says you're going to mount up like wings of eagles. So I want to deal with the eagle for a minute. Can you put that first picture up there, that next picture? It should be the picture of an eagle soaring, isn't it? Yes. Isn't that a powerful situation there? Yes. That is a full-grown eagle. Mounted wings. How many of us, have, us men have gone to the story about a four by eight sheep, five widow, a sheep rock, you know? Well, the eagle's wings, when they're spread out, especially the Alaskan eagles. They can spread out over eight feet. They can get up 15,000 feet. Can you imagine that? They can get up the speeds of 150 to 200 miles an hour. I, I saw a video of an eagle. He wasn't going after a rabbit or a fish. He was going after a small mountain. He, he flew down, landed on this mountain goat, lifted it up in the air, carried it about five feet away from where the mountain goat was standing, and then dropped it so that it fell. He did it purposely. But the fact that he lifted it off the ground, he's not able to do that without the wings, the strength of the wings. Now, here is the key that I want you to understand about the eagle. Show me the next picture, would you? 